again, today is a, that day where we are experimenting and doing stuff. Uh, <clears throat> so Galatians. Galatians are six chapters. Six chapters. I think it's the only book that Paul is addressing many churches. You can see shortly. So I wanted us to just identify particular things in this book of Galatians. But at the same, same time, try and see how you can go through a book, an epistle, a parable. There are many things. There are many ways of studying the Bible. Uh, I think the most extensive and deeper way of studying the Bible is what we normally call exegesis, where you do word studies. So you might, you might be on a scripture for even a, in an entire year or a chapter for an entire year, yeah? Uh, so I was, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this, I had a hope which got a little bit deferred in a good way. The hope actually was we do Galatians today. Not really, six chapters. I'm also sure if you're going to be able to crack it. Uh, but the Lord will show us, will take us somewhere. So I just want to see how, again, how Paul, as the apostle, was approaching particular things. We have this Bible in our custody. And sometimes we go through letters, we go through epistles, we go through gospels, we go through the Psalms. But sometimes we are not on the same page with the person who was inspired by the Holy Spirit to write that book. Mm-hmm. Or that letter, for that matter. So this Bible is actually full of mysteries, full of deep things. The book is still being opened. And they say when you approach the word of God, even, even if you've been teaching for the last 30 years, you must approach it as what? One who's willing to learn. Yeah. That's where we are coming from. Like today I just froze at James where the Bible says, the wisdom that comes from above is fast. It says it's fast, pure. Mm-hmm. And he says, Selah. Mm-hmm. And some of you are looking at the wisdom clothed with a white cloth, fast, pure. <laughs> it's fast crystal. And you start thinking about what does it mean exactly. Uh, so you can, stick, you can stick in particular places, in some particular locations of the word of God that just freeze for you a moment. When David comes and says things like, then my God said unto my God. Yeah. Sit down until I make your enemies your first two. This is David in a very elevated space of meditation that he has the ability to eavesdrop on conversations of eternal nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Because, mm-hmm. I mean, what was he? How did he hear that? How did he write the Messianic Psalms? Yeah. <laughs> so this book is an interesting book, and different people have approached it different ways, and they have gotten what they wanted. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Galatians, this is Paul writing, and I would actually just warn us a bit that I believe Galatians is actually a micro romans in fact, they say Galatians was written before Romans. So it's a micro-Romans. So you want to see something here. So let me read for you some particular things that will put some of these things into context. So let me start. Uh, Galatia was a Roman province which included Lyconia, Isauria, and parts of Pharisia and Pisidia. Those who have read Asterix most likely will understand this. <laughs> okay. It's now, it's, Galatia is now in southern Turkey. Uh, the purpose of this epistle was to eradicate the doctrinal errors which had been recently introduced by hostile Judaizers. Ever heard of Judaizers? Yeah. Yeah, host- and these are not just Judaizers, they were hostile Judaizers. And to urge the Galatian Christians to hold firmly to what they had been taught by Paul at the beginning. So the people were generally impressionable, fickle, <laughs> and quick-tempered. So if you go to Galatians 4, uh, 13 to 16, you'll find that. If you go to Acts chapter 14, 18 to 19, you see what that means exactly. Uh, we don't have time to go that direction. In fact, I, d- I decided to call this the hypnotized Galatian uh, quick snack attack because I wanted us to go through it quickly. <laughs> <coughs> and then uh, it says, Paul had started these congregations on his first missionary journey with considerable success, proclaiming the door of faith open. To all of them, yeah? Mm-hmm. Then he revisited them on the second missionary journey. Remember those Paul missionary journeys? Yeah. Th- that, those places in the Bible you don't visit is at, at the end of your, mm-hmm. your Bible. They're normally maps and Paul yeah, missionary journeys, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. In the meantime, Judaistic teachers had subverted his work mm-hmm. by teaching a new type of what? Legalism to these innocent Gentile believers. So there are three things playing here. There's Paul, and then there's Judaizers. Mm-hmm. The Judaizers are actually Jews. Yeah. And then there's what we call Gentile Christians. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. So Galatia is actually an area of Gentile what? Christians. Yeah. And then Paul has competition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the competition is coming from what? The Judaizers. Mm -hmm. Who are, okay, so the Jewish traditionalists refused to accept the apostolic teaching of Paul. They felt that they had the copyright on Jesus. They zealously undermined and unsettled these new converts. <laughs> who are, say, new converts. Mm -hmm. Key word there, new converts. <laughs> who are unstable and not grounded, persuading them to defect from Paul's teaching. They suggested that Paul had learned his ideas secondhand from the apostles who were pillars in Jerusalem, while they themselves had what? The inside story. I know, try and think about in terms of Paul has gone to Galatia. And, the, and you can see they're saying many churches. Mm -hmm. And he's in that area here, taught, taught, taught. He has been there for some time. You can see he's already done most likely three missionary journeys. Mm. And he's in the age of no social media. Mm. So you can say, I'm, I want to keep tabs. Mm -hmm. You can't send a text and say, hey guys, what, what is happening down there? Mm. You know, so by the time you're going to your third missionary journey, which is most likely maybe a year later, two years later, you realize, whoo, some guys came in mm. <laughs> and overturned whatever you had what? You had established. Mm. That will teach you sometimes when God puts you in a market space, even in this day of social media, that the guarantee, most of us, what we see is success. Most of our success is by sight. Mm -hmm. Are you understanding? And if you don't see it, we don't think we have succeeded. Mm -hmm. It will teach you how to rely on the Holy Spirit to be one who covers, or who takes care of mm -hmm. the labors, or the, your labors, whether it is a product or a service or the things you are doing, whether you are reaching out to people. When you're not there, who takes care of them? It's not a guarantee that they'll continue following what you are talking about, if you could say so. So the Spirit of God is very important in some of these things. Look at, look at this. So he says, the Judaizing threat ended at the fall of Jerusalem, which is AD 70. You know what happened in AD 70? The temple was destroyed and people were dispersed. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you read the, the, the destruction of the temple, people normally confuse end-time prophets, prophetic words, with what was happening in AD 70. We shall not go into that right now. Right now we're in Galatians. So he says, the Judaizing threat ended at the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70. Prior to that time, Jewish Christians, which are called Messianic believers, were considered to be a sect. So you are talking about Paul introducing new teachings in that time, which was actually a minority. Mm. And the funny thing about demographics and culture is, if you want a culture not to spread, don't persecute it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Find other ways of enculturating. So Judaizers insisted that the non-Jewish believers in Christ could not be what? True Christians until, until they submitted to the circumcision. Yeah. A Jewish believer, and Jewish, non-Jewish believers in Christ could not be true Christians until they submitted to the circumcision. A Jewish right from the Old Testament and by keeping the law of Moses. That's what the Judaizers were saying. Yeah. The saying is, we should do, pro, the guys used to do programming in those days, it was C++. C plus and C plus plus. So it's Jesus Christ plus plus. Mm. <laughs> and that's what religion is. Religion is actually foundational Jesus Christ, but you add other things. Yeah. And those other things, slowly by slowly, they become more important than the foundation you laid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the naive Galatian Christians listened to them with the same enthusiastic receptivity they had given to Paul originally. Paul did not deny the importance of circumcision or any other Jewish custom to the Jews. In fact, Paul was formerly a high-ranking Jewish leader himself. And he had even, been, had even participated in religious practices in the temple late in his ministry to prove that he could be all things to all men, 1 Corinthians 9.22. Mm -hmm. However, circumcision had nothing whatsoever to do with what? Salvation. Paul contended that his apostleship was genuine, not from any human authority, but from God, he had proclaimed the true gospel to them. The Judaizers were tempering <laughs> with the essential thrust of the very nature of the gospel. Mm. There was much at stake. Mm. That is a lot of work. You've just disappeared for two years or one year or six months and you come back. Now you have to start again. Mm. That is what is called being an apostle. <laughs> an apostle is not a title mm. or something you put on a business card. <clears throat> as anyway. We stick to the script. <laughs> mm. we, shall, if we, we shall see at some point Paul saying, My children, in whom I travel in birth again, until, 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 that's the key word there, until Christ be formed. Mm. So that is one of the qualifications of how sent are you? Mm. So in your sentness, try and look for the until's. Mm. <laughs> I'm not going to leave this station 
until. <laughs> that is how you know you have been sent. <laughs> or you sent yourself. <laughs> so in Galatians, there's a, there's, there are a series of important contrasts. The different type of a gospel versus the authentic gospel, man's reasoning versus God's revelation, law versus grace, works versus faith, the curse of death versus the blessing of life, condemnation versus what? Exoneration. Servants in bondage versus sons in freedom. Defeat versus victory. The old covenant versus what? The new covenant. Living in the flesh versus walking in the spirit. The works of the flesh versus the fruit of the spirit. Falling from grace versus what? Standing firm in grace. The world as the object of boasting versus the cross of Christ. Paul recapitulates by saying that the Christian life is the natural fruit which flows from God's love. Galatians 5, 6. The date of Paul's writing is uncertain, but it is thought that it was before he wrote the more detailed book of Romans concerning much of the same subject matter. Introduction, yeah? Mm -hmm. That's where we are coming from. Mm -hmm. I just remembered something. Okay. So are we, are we clear? Yeah. <laughs> so now <laughs> let us see what we can get from this book. <laughs> so you are there. Are you there? Yeah. So Paul begins by saying, Paul, an apostle, not of men. So it's very clear. He's saying not of men for a reason. Mm -hmm. you, you, you've seen how I've read the introduction. When Paul is saying not of men, he's doing that what? For a reason. He's not just writing without a reason. He's saying not of men, but of what? But of Christ. Can you say that about your calling? <laughs> <laughs> How do you know your calling or why you are positioned, as we said? It's not of men. Question. Yeah, it's not of men. You know say, but I have a question. Yeah. About what you say. Let's say yeah. in your context when you were studying something, yeah. you didn't consult God, right? Yeah. That specific thing, right? Yeah. Now you're already in it, you're doing something or whatever. Yeah. Do you, how do you then know, I guess long term, if you are like you got there by mistake by not doing <laughs> the right thing, but you're still in the right place or you're actually in the wrong place and you should move up. Does that make sense? Because there's sometimes where God is just like, I'm still okay, so, still getting there. But so to, for avoidance of doubt, for those people who might be thinking, hey, he's speaking about me. <laughs> for, for so these are, the, these are, the, these are the, <laughs> the bare minimums, number one. Number one. Uh, number one, you're born into a family. I normally begin from just, it's not my foundational things, you're born into a family. You have to sit down and contemplate that. What does that exactly even mean? You're born into a family, number one. You are born of love. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You're born of love, mm -hmm. number one. Number two. Number three, the, the stimulus of love is a stimulus, first of all, that is endeared to you so that you can be able to hear God. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> because if that is not emphasized, every time we hear a voice, especially when you hear, listen to the Father, we will always interpret it as a voice of condemnation. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And all of us, oh, by the way, all of us have been there many times mm. where we bound the Father in Jesus' name. <laughs> 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 we bound the Father in Jesus' name because we feel like, hey, we have been trained, our ear has been trained that the Father speaks from a place of condemnation. Mm. And it's difficult for people to countenance that love is a speech that brings in what? Grace. Mm -hmm. Are you understanding? Yeah. So Paul would say something like this. So let me give you examples. If you go to the book of Acts, Paul says things like, and I was going and I did this and I did that. And then the Holy Spirit withstood me. Mm -hmm. what, what does withstanding mean? Stop. Stop. No, come. <laughs> come back. Yeah. It's, he's saying I'm, I'm, ex I'm experiencing a resistance. He's, he's resisting me, I'm in Thika. <laughs> Why didn't he stop me when I was in Nairobi? Yeah, it's because in learning how to relate to our father, in learning, the key word there is in learning how to relate to our father, we are growing. Are you understanding? We are growing. The father does not operate at your speed. So when we say repentance, adjustment, adjustment to our thinking to the voice of the father, are you understanding? What happens? It's adjusted. Even your journey is what? Adjusted. So the problem is this. Most of us, we feel we have gone so far. We've gone so, so far. <laughs> that uh, 
uh, we just ha we're hearing the cow bells of condemnation following us. And they're saying, hey, it's so tiring just to go back. Are you understanding? So I want to say today, today, maybe as we're going through Galatians, God will tell you. And because of that, some of us, when we are doing the right things, we're not even sure. Yeah. <laughs> we're not even sure. So one of the things about being born in a family is for you to understand the family culture. Mm -hmm. And the family culture of God is, my sheep hear my voice. Are you understanding? Mm -hmm. When a kid is born from a sheep, yeah? Mm -hmm. First of all, it starts hearing the mother's bleating, yeah? Mm -hmm. If you could say so. But now there's the shepherd who trains the sheep, mm -hmm. trains the sheep. And eventually when the sheep begins to, listen, to hear the shepherd, this is John chapter 10, mm -hmm. if, you, if you have ever heard of that. John 10. He says, my sheep hear my voice. Ever heard of that? He says, now the shepherd trains you. So number one, the shepherd is going to train you to hear his voice. Mm -hmm. The shepherd is going to train you to bring you back to lion. Mm -hmm. The shepherd is going to train you to be confident that you are on the right line. Mm -hmm. Most of you might be saying naturally, but I have wasted so, so many years. Revelatory voice adjustment will most likely always gain you what? Time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know people can throw stones at me on that one, but I think I'll stick on that one. Mm. Yeah. Are you understanding? Yeah. So let's, 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 let's go into this thing with some sense of freedom. <laughs> but now the point is not even sense of freedom. It's now that you know, what are you going to do with that freedom? <laughs> are you understanding? Okay, good. So there's going to be adjustments. They're going to be, it, is, it, is, it is to the interest of the kingdom that the Father is clear that you have heard what he is telling you. Exactly. He's, not a, he's not the kind of Father who will just say, ah, he'll figure it out. <laughs> Let him go and just, who are you? <laughs> that one. I've been telling you. The problem actually is that sometimes we have imported too much of our parentage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's, let's, let's try and see this. It says, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by who? But by Jesus Christ, the God, uh, and God the Father, who did what? Raise him from the dead. Why does Paul normally say such things? Raise him from the dead. <laughs> Why is that important for him to say? Because he has to tell you what kind of Jesus he's talking about. Which Yeshua is he talking about? There are many guys called Joshua, Yeshua there. Hmm. The one who died. <laughs> the one who died and the one who was what? Rose again. Okay. And because he's talking about raising from the dead, it means he died. I understand. It. That's a very significant thing in the time of Paul and in the context of Paul at that particular moment. It looks very fallacious at that particular time. It is like a fallacy. What do you mean a guy died and he resurrected? Paul is saying, that's the one I'm following. That's the one who has sent me. He's saying, and all the brethren which are where? with me, and then he says what? Under the what? The churches. So there are many places he's addressing in Galatia. So he says, grace be to you, the peace and peace. From who? From God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. So where is he deriving his grace from? It's God the Father and Jesus. Okay, sidebar. No, that's the problem of sidebars. <laughs> but sidebars have to happen, yeah? So let me take you somewhere. <laughs> John chapter 17 where we get 1714 <laughs> in the, uh, the gospel of John. Yeah. A, I want to say, show you something. John 17, he says, this words, verse, verse one, this words speak Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven. My daughter was asking me the other day. So when Jesus was praying to his father, what was he saying? Did he used to say in Jesus name? <laughs> 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 so he said, this word speak Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. What did he say? Glorify your son and, the, and thy son also may do what? Glorify thee. From there you can get the definition of what glory is. And he says, verse 2, as you have given him what? Power. Look at that. As you have given him what? Power. Over what? Everyone. All flesh. Over all flesh. That he should do what? Give eternal life. That he should give eternal life to as many as though has what? Given him. Amen. Power of all flesh. So it gives him the license to distribute. Mm. Are you seeing? Distribution is a function of what? Power. Oh. Authority. 
Go ye therefore. All power in heaven and the earth has been given to me. Go ye therefore. What power? Power over all flesh. He says power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. Now, verse 3 is critical. And this is life eternal. So he wants to define something. And this is what? Life eternal. That they may know you. Let's try that again. Slowly by slowly. That they, they may know you. Yeah. The only true God. Uh -huh. And Jesus Christ uh -huh. whom you have sent. So before this scripture, if I asked you what is life eternal, you'd have given me different answers. Living forever. <laughs> this is life eternal. That they may know you. Uh -huh. The only true God. And not just that. This is how they know the only true God. The only true God sent his son. So there are many gods. Mm -hmm. But you're the only true God. What justifies you being the only true God? It's because the only true God sent his son. Mm -hmm. The only true God and Jesus Christ, who he is what? Whom he has sent. Mm -hmm. That is life eternal. So when you're delivering life eternal, when you're delivering the grace of eternity, are you delivering it from the posture of the only true God mm -hmm. and Jesus Christ whom he has sent? This would cost your life in the days of Paul. <laughs> so when Paul is saying in Galatians and saying things like this, grace be to you that peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you seeing that? He began by saying, I, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father. This is life eternal. So Paul is talking or Paul is deriving his expression from the economy of what? Life eternal. Which is what? The only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Mm. This is now, we're going back to the basics. People used to say that, eh? I think every April in many churches used to be back to the basics. Mm. Here we are. <laughs> he says, and this is life eternal that they, may not, they might know you. They might know you. They, you are sending us to, might know you. They will know you as who? The only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Verse four, verse 4 says, I have glorified you on the earth and have finished. Hey, not very people, many people in the Bible say I have finished. Mm. And I have finished the work which you gave me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify you me with thy own self and with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Are you seeing that? Yes. Those are very heavy things. Mm. I think that's, a, that's the real Lord's Prayer. <laughs> now, I used to use... I used to use John 17, to prove to people that God does not love you less than he loves Jesus. Mm -hmm. And guys would nearly remove their shoes to stone me. Mm -hmm. Because psychologically somewhere pinned in your psyche, mm -hmm. you always feel like you're the lesser brother. Yeah. <laughs> you're the lesser sibling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you feel like... <laughs> okay, let me show you. Okay, let's try this. Verse 22. And the glory which you have given me. He has asked for glory here, yeah? Mm. Glorify me. Eh? Mm. And he says, I've glorified you on the earth, yeah? Mm. Look at verse 22. And the glory which you have given me. Verse 22 says what? I have given them. Given. The really? Man. Why is he giving you? But you're the lesser brother. <laughs> or is he filling the eternal market gap? <laughs> <laughs> The glory which you have given me, I have given them that they may be what? One. So the reason why, if you see fightings and strivings in spiritual communities, glory absent. Mm. Yeah. The mystical union, the mystical union of the saints countenances the glory of God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he says, that may, that may be what? One. I in them, listen, look at this verse 23, I in them and you in me. This is confusing the devil. I in them and you in me, and they, they made me what? Made perfect. How are you made perfect? Yeah. I in them and yeah. in me. Oh, we are in him and God is in him. Yeah. Hmm. He says, in, so we are all meshed. Not meshed. We are all what? Yeah. Meshed. <laughs> that we may be made what? Perfect. The word there is complete. Telois. Mm. We may be made complete. In one. Mm -hmm. The aim has always been what? Mystical union. He says, and that the world may know. This is now how we show. The world may know that thou hast what? Sent me. Let's go slowly. Let's just go slowly. The low, is it the higher gears or the lower gears? Let's go slowly. The low, let's just go slowly. Say that they, that they may know that you have done what? Sent me and has what? Loved them as how? Ah, 
Is it in your, ba- is it in your Bible? Yeah. 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 So how has it, how have you been loved? The way God loves Jesus. So <laughs> why would you be in doubt that you've been sent if he was sent? And the only way to qualify your sentness is to know the only true God and Jesus Christ who he sent. Yeah. So he tells us now I'm sending you. Why am I sending you? Because you in me and I, in God. God, and he loves me just the same way what? He loves you. And that qualifies you to be sent. Because mm. me, I'm closing up the chapter and I want to go die, mm-hmm. resurrect, and ascend. Mm. So who am I going to leave behind? I'm going to leave behind a pedigree of people who are conscious of the fact that they have been loved the same way I was loved, mm-hmm. number one. And secondly, a pedigree of people who know that because of that love, they can be sent. Mm. Because there's a delivery they need to make. Mm-hmm. And the delivery is the world must know, number one, mm-hmm. that we are together, one. Mm-hmm. And the secondly, the world must know the only true God and Jesus Christ who he has sent. Yeah. That's the gospel. Mm-hmm. Everything else is tri mm-hmm. <laughs> So look at this. Mm-hmm. Verse 4, Galatians chapter 1. Who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from what? From his present <laughs> evil age. Are you seeing that? Mm. Interesting, profound things. He gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to what? The will of God and of what is one of the wills of what is one of the will of God? One of the will of God is to deliver you from the evil age. From the present evil age. Wow. This age is evil. Mm-hmm. So your salvation is what? A brand that identifies you distinctly apart from the evil of the day. Mm. Salvation means you're not part of the evil of the day. Mm. <laughs> and that is the will of the Father. Mm. Are you seeing that? Yeah. To whom what? Be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, knowing Paul, that's just the introduction. So now <laughs> he wants to begin to go into issues. Yeah. So these guys are just seeing Paul typing. Oh <laughs> 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 hey, Paul is just hey, throwing bombs. Yeah. You can see emojis of fire. <sighs> you know, anyway. Now he begins to say, verse 6, I marvel that <laughs> you are so soon removed from him. Now, the key word there is what is marveling at Paul is this. The key word there is what? You are so soon. soon. How was Sunday church? <laughs> <laughs> what did the pastor teach? Uh, soon. <laughs> we forget. He said, I'm marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ. Soon. To what? To another gospel. So he has introduced another thing there. It's called what? Another, another gospel. So you are removed from the real gospel to another gospel. And then he says, which is not another, another version says, so that you don't get confused with King James English. <laughs> that is verse 6. Verse 6 actually says, uh, I'm amazed that you are so readily deserting for a different gospel. Yeah, that's another version. I'm amazed that you are so quickly turning away from him who called you by the mercy of Christ. That's the good speed version. I am dumbfounded that you have so quickly deserted him that called you into the grace of Christ and have gone over to a different gospel in quotes. Are you seeing that? Mm-hmm. And then he says, for the gospel there is none. That for the, he says, which really is not a good news. And so that's why he's saying, which is not another gospel. Which means, which is not a, the true gospel. Mm-hmm. They've gone to something different. Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of what? Christ. Yes. That's, perversion produces what? Another. Mm-hmm. Perversion produces another. You cannot pervert until there's a true thing. Yeah. So Paul laid down a foundation of what? Of a true thing. And then he came and did what? The guy's coming to do what? To pervert. So there are two injuries that are happening here. There are those sometimes who can come. There are two spiritual injuries here. One injury is good. When you go to a place and find they have a wrong gospel, and then you rectify it. It's equally hard labor. Mm-hmm. Or when now you have laid a foundation, and some guys came afterward and did what? Yes. Now you have to go back again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, but... He says, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be what? A cast. He says, there's a gospel. I talked to you some things. I came there three times. And you know, this is not that Paul is walking from here to Hallingham. 
<laughs> yeah. I understand. Yeah. There is no Ubaying here, there's no whatever. He is miles and miles of places to go and tell these guys. And he's been there every other day. There's a time when he hired a whole room called the, room, the conference room of Tyranas, and he was there for some time. Yeah. Most of the times we see on television things, people saying, handkerchief miracles. Have you seen those things? Yeah. But people forget that Paul was in that city for 18 months. 18 months. The Bible says Paul was there in 18 months. In fact, Amplified says teaching every day from 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock. Mm. Now, these handkerchiefs that they're talking about were not clean, nice white handkerchiefs. The Bible says aprons. These guys were silversmiths. Mm. When we hear that, the picture we normally have is he's in a very good, dignified church sanctuary somewhere. Mm. Paul is in somewhere like what? Uh, <laughs> Mudur were there. <laughs> well, guys are like, eh. yeah. so, yeah, so they have what? Are there. That, that, so they're coming to listen to this gospel. Mm -hmm. And those are the things that Paul, the Bible says. And Paul is not saying, my aim is to teach these guys until the aprons begin to transmit healing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is not his aim. He's there every day. The Bible says, 18 months teaching. And because of that, what we normally call in the, in the revival terms, the effulgence of the spirit mm -hmm. constantly. It was even affecting what? What they had as aprons. Mm -hmm. These guys go home and say, hey, people are getting healed because of what? Yeah? yeah, that was not his aim, but that's one of the consequences. Yeah. His aim was for them to begin to understand some of these things we are trying to look in the book of Galatians. Yeah. It says, by though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let them be what? A cast. That's a deep word. I don't want to go into it, but yeah. Mm -hmm. He says, or should I? <laughs> <laughs> he says, let him be a cast. That word means let him be excommunicated. <laughs> they didn't receive a religious ban. He says, as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach you another gospel unto you, than that which we have what received, let him be accursed. So he's repeating it in verse 9. Verse 10, for do I know now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be what? Okay. That, one, that one just, there's a way it hit me with, a, you know, like a fivefold blow. The effectiveness of ministry in the 21st century will be based, pegged on that verse. Mm. If I should please men, I'll not be a servant of Christ. Mm. That's what Paul is saying. There's too much men pleasing. Mm. That's why the gospel is not effective. Mm. When you have too much men pleasing, you begin to doctor the gospel. <laughs> There's too much what? Man pleasing. He says, if I, if I yet please, pleased men, I should not what? be a servant of Christ. There are things, most likely, or stations you are in right now. There might be an individual or an opinion that is very secret in that. If that opinion, you had the capacity to overcome it, if that person you are fearing in that space, you had the capacity not to fear him, what would you do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I certify you, brethren, <laughs> that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. So now he's beginning to create a path to actually establish his credentials. Because that's one thing the Judaizers were coming to do. Mm. To tell this guy, this guy is fake. Mm. This guy received what? He was in class copying notes of like in a po po uh, Peter, James, and John. That's all the things he's coming to teach you guys here. He says, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by what? Revelation of Jesus Christ. So all these things come what? By revelation. By the opening up of scripture, yeah? He says, I neither received it of man, but by the what? The revelation of Jesus Christ. Verse 13, for you have heard of my what? Conversation in times past in the Jews' religion. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You guys know. You know me. You know what I used to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As a bad guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he says, for how beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. Mm. <laughs> Verse 14 says, and profited in the Jews' religion above many, many my equals in my own what? Nation. Sure being more exceedingly zealous for the traditions of my fathers. Mm. Paul was serious when he was a Jew, and he equally became serious when he became a Christian. Mm. But Paul sat under two, two, he sat under two rabbis. We know, we know Gamaliel. Gamaliel was more of a peaceful rabbi. When you read the books of a guy called N.T. Wright, he'll show you Paul sat under another rabbi who was a violent, a militaristic rabbi. Yeah. So Paul had the best of two schools. Mm -hmm. So that's why when guys were saying they are Christians, and Paul has come from a rabbinic order, mm -hmm. 
So what, what are these guys talking about? Because Paul has come from a rabbinic order where God has promised to, to do what? To, to pour vengeance upon the nations that do not follow what? Follow God. So they are waiting for this coming king mm -hmm. who's going to turn these things what? Round about. Mm -hmm. And then this Jewish carpenter comes and says, he's a king. Mm -hmm. Paul is there. Ah, there's nothing like that. <laughs> so he's been schooled from that order. He's coming from that particular place. And he's just about to show us what he, what he did. He says, and I profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in my own nation, but being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. So you see, I took it seriously. Verse 15, but when it pleased God, <laughs> there's always that place, who separated me from my mother's womb. There's a guy who wrote a book called Separation and Calling. Mm -hmm. And he used to have this theological expression where you are separated and then you're called. <laughs> anyway, who separated me from my mother's womb? And call me by what? His grace. So calling is, calling is a grace. Mm -hmm. you c don't come to a point where you're collapsing under what you're calling your calling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, ex it's, ex it's excessively becoming laborious. Mm -hmm. It's a grace. Mm -hmm. Find a way of sitting at the feet of the Holy Spirit and say, tutor me how to do what? To handle, to handle this calling without feeling what? Fatigued, mm -hmm. without feeling wasted. So Paul is saying it's a grace. He says, to reveal his son in me. To reveal his son where? Amen. In me. That I may preach him among the heathen. This is another thing again I was saying. Are we preaching the Jesus who has been revealed to us? Are we preaching the Jesus who we just read about? <laughs> Sorry guys, we're just reading Galatians. <laughs> Today I was looking for a more nice juicy someone, but... Here we are in Galatians. So to reveal Jesus in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, and immediately I conferred not with what? Flesh and blood. Why? We're normally very quick to share our ideas. Eh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you know why? The eternal market gap. Because we need, an we need affirmation. Yeah. We're not comfortable saying, okay, I've gotten this idea. God, is that you? And then sit with the Spirit of God and say, okay, I just want to first of all establish it's you. Then secondly, I want to establish that that idea is an idea I need to spread. Yeah? So that when nobody is present, but, but because I had you, I can go. Mm. But the first thing we do is what? Shit. Confer with flesh and blood mm. that we have been sent. Mm. And then when we get stuck, what happens? <laughs> we go back to what? The God who we thought uh, did what? Sent us. Look at this. Verse 17, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were what? Apostles. Now, why is he saying, neither did I go up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles? Because there are rumors going around saying what? Paul got his gospel from these guys. Mm -hmm. So neither did, went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. But I went into what? Arabia and returned again to what? Damascus. How was he there? How long was he there? Verse 18. Then after three years, I went up to what? Jerusalem to see Peter. Are you seeing that? Mm -hmm. And aboard with him for what? 15 days. So he snuck in. That's the simple way of saying it. He snuck in to see Peter. <laughs> and I was with Peter for 15 days. Peter's a hard nut, nut to crack, so I have to explain to him these things, <laughs> what I have gotten. But other of the apostles saw I none, save James, the Lord's brother. So he's talking about not James, the one who was killed by Herod. He's talking about James, the Lord's brother, where you get the book of James. Yeah. Are you seeing that? He says, save James, the Lord's brother. Verse 20, now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God, I do not lie. Yeah? Uh -huh. So Paul is saying, I can only call one witness in the docks when it comes to my sentness, when it comes to how I receive this gospel. And that's only God. <laughs> he says, uh, verse 21, afterward, I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, verse 22, and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. I think it was a good thing. <laughs> but they had, they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preaches what? The faith which once he destroyed. Because there are no mark shots. <laughs> These guys would have killed him. Verse 14, 24, and they glorified God in me. That's the end of chapter 1. They glorified God with me. Now, you know, when the Bible was written, there was no chapter and verse. Chapter and verse came much later. So this is an express letter continuing. I think the Holy Spirit is the generation that is coming in the future. Wow, we need to give them chapter and verse. <laughs> <laughs> so verse chapter 2. Then 14 years after, which means 
he has received the gospel, gone to the desert of Arabia for three years, snuck there and talked to Peter for 15 days, and then snuck out. And then now he goes back, what, 14 years later. What has been happening for those 14 years? This gospel in Paul has been becoming, what, solidified yeah. and more expansive. Yeah. And God has decided, this, guy, this is the guy I'm going to send. Mm -hmm. If you noticed in uh, the book of Acts, if you look at the order of things, the guys in Jerusalem at some point just percolated. <laughs> and God says, hey, these guys I don't think will crack it. God even tried to send Peter to go into the house of Cornelius. These are the yeah. Gentiles. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Peter is just asking God, hey, it's not... It's not lawful for, hey, no. <laughs> Which means Peter just saying, this gospel cannot, cannot go there. This is a chief apostle. Mm -hmm. So just to encourage you that even chief apostles have what? Doubts. Mm -hmm. Especially when they're talking to God directly. <laughs> 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 you know, it's in the Bible, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Peter is trying to tutor God and say, hey, I know you're showing me this. Where you, and there's a, my, my, a, a cry to the Italians. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Can you imagine Peter being sent to the Sopranos? To <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so Peter goes there and still shaking. He's still shaking. The Bible says, as while he yet what was speaking, the Holy Spirit what fell upon them. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing that? Mm -hmm. And this is Peter who has been tried. We'll go to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. So two chapters, one chapter later, then that Paul is arrested. God says, this is the guy I think we should go out. Yeah. Are you seeing that? So Paul says, then 14 years after, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. Uh, you know the book of Titus? Yeah. yeah. And I went up what? Again, by revelation. And communicated unto them that gospel, which I preach among the Gentiles. You see, this is the things I'm, I'm telling the Gentiles. Mm. So let me go and share with them. And that is, why is Paul doing this? Paul is operating in a grace of diplomacy. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to run the race. You know what he says? I don't want to run the race in vain. Mm -hmm. So he says, and I went up by revelation and communicated unto them the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately, 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 to them which were of what? Reputation. Yeah. Lest by any means I should what? Run or had run in vain. Mm -hmm. So he said, he, I go there and then I separate these guys. Book for me a room, but as you book for me the conference room, give me also another separate room. So I may talk to these big guys, the guys who are Peter, James, and John most likely, or the guys there, the main chief apostles. These are the guys who are with Jesus. Mm -hmm. They need to understand that also, even me, I'm getting this thing. I might not have seen Jesus in the, in the flesh, but I have revelation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's just diplomacy. He says, but neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek. You see that? And yeah. Paul is very tactical. He goes with Titus deliberately. Mm -hmm. Titus is a Greek, which means he's a typical yeah. Gentile. <laughs> <laughs> he says, neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be, at, to be circumcised. So if I went to the region of the hardcore. These are guys who are Jesus. These are hardcore Jews mm -hmm. who have now become to, have now begun to follow Jesus Christ. And I went over the Titus, and they know Titus. Mm. And they didn't compel Titus to be circumcised. Mm -hmm. Why are these Judaizers telling you that you need to be circumcised? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, let's continue. <laughs> Titus was not compelled to be circumcised. And that because of false brethren and awares brought in, who come in privately to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ, that they might what? Bring us unto bondage. He said that these people who have come as spies, mm -hmm. trying to see the liberty in which we are living in Christ. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing that? Yeah. And then they're trying to bring in what? Stuff. Mm -hmm. To bring us back to what? To bondage. To, bring, to take us back to what? The law of Moses, if you mm -hmm. could say so. To whom we gave place by subjection. Not, no, not for an hour. The truth of the gospel might continue with you. I think that, mm -hmm. but of those of those who seem to be what, somewhat whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter. It maketh no matter to me. God accepts no man's person, for they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. He says, I've talked to these guys, explained to them the things I learned. I've gone with Titus, and I've preached to them what I've been given as far as revelation is concerned. Mm -hmm. And I've asked anybody who has a question. <laughs> nobody has asked any question. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And he's very tactical. I have gone to the highest of highest of all. Mm -hmm. Yeah? He says, but contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed to me. So these guys are beginning to look, look at Paul and say, hey, this guy might be onto something. Mm -hmm. Says, so contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed to me, as the gospel of the circumcision was committed unto Peter. 
Yeah? Mm -hmm. That's a potential rivalry. There's one mm -hmm. sent to the Jews, one sent to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, which means Peter taking the gospel to the Jews, mm -hmm. the same was mighty in me to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. So the same, same God who has given Peter the grace and the calling and has sent him to the Gentiles, to the, to the Jews, is the same, same one who's what, doing what? Working in me to do what? To send me towards what? The Gentiles. I love this thing of when he says, wrote, wrote effectually in Peter, which means in me. Remember Philippians 2.15? 2, 2, mm -hmm. God working in me both to will and to do. Yeah, that is how the sentness happens. God is working in you both to will and to do. To send you out there. He says, this same, same God was mighty in me towards what? The Gentiles. Verse 9. And when James, Cephas, and John, the big three, who seemed to be what? Pillars. Perceived. It required a perception. It required discernment. <laughs> perceived the grace that was given unto me. They gave to me and Barnabas what? The right hand of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen and they unto what? The circumcision. So now Paul has put an order. The pecking orders. There are things that God can call you to do. You understand? We're talking about context and space. Do you remember that? Yeah. And you can look at the way the machinations of the culture or the place you are in mm. and you're seeing the potential war might not even come from the devil outside. Mm. It may come from the fold. Mm. Paul is saying him he used diplomacy methods, mm. most likely led by the Spirit of God, to make sure there was no conflict. Mm. So when you see me going to the Gentiles, don't get offended because this is not rival. We are in the same house. Yeah. God is effectually working in you, Peter, mm. and just effectually working in me. Mm. You towards the Jews, me towards what? The Gentiles. Jesus. Verse 9, uh, no, they gave me the right hand of fellowship that we should go into the heathen and they unto the, circum the circumcision. Verse 10, only they would that we should remember the poor, mm -hmm. the same which I also was for to do. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing that? Mm -hmm. Verse 11, but when Peter was come to Antioch, now that's where now the plot is changing. Mm -hmm. The movie has started and we are there, we are going somewhere. Attention. But when Peter was come unto Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. Mm -hmm. Hey, Paul, what is happening now? For before the Saturn came, he's talking about the Jews coming from Je Jerusalem, yeah? For before the Saturn came from James, James was sending a company of guys. Go and check out what is happening. Because Peter went that direction. Mm. Yeah. Peter went to Antioch. <laughs> yeah. And he's not coming. Just go and check what, what is happening. So before the Saturn came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. Peter was okay eating sausages and bacon. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Peter was there, where? At the hub. Mm -hmm. Today's a Thursday, endless what? Bottomless mm -hmm. <laughs> pork ribs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For before the certain game from the James, he did eat with the Gentiles, but when they were come, because there's no WhatsApp there to, to warn you. Mm -hmm. Hey, they're coming. Hey, Peter, we are just near, <laughs> we are near Nakama Junction, we are near Junction, we're coming. He said, see me, so he's sensing these guys might come, they might pater me. What did he do? He withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of what? So, Peter, so what is Peter doing? In fact, the word there is not he just withdrew. The word used there, Paul is saying, he tactically began to do what? To withdraw. Peter says, I'm busy, you know, I'm praying, you know. <laughs> today, 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 today I'm fasting. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, not I mean, I'm, I'm detoxing. <laughs> You know, this, this has been a fogo gaucho, you know. <laughs> I'm just seeing now. So Paul is saying, he began to do what? He began to walk in contradiction to what they are calling what? The gospel. This gospel has come and brought down barriers. So there's no longer Jew or Gentile. But when Peter is tactfully withdrawing, the Bible says, separated himself, fearing them which were what? The circumcision. He is actually beginning to mis mis misrepresent the gospel and thereby introducing another gospel. Uh, Are you seeing that? Yeah. And the other Jews disassembled likewise with him. Now, the problem is not even that. We talked about positioning influence. Mm. So Peter began influencing other Jews who are with him yeah. with the same respect. Why is Peter withdrawing? Mm. Really? I don't think it's because of detox. Mm. There's something wrong here. So now he began influencing. It comes from idea or theology mm -hmm. to practice, and practice actually is copied faster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the practice of his wrong theology, or his wrong doctrine, if you could say so, was actually spreading faster than the work Paul had done what? Yeah. So he was actually destroying, mm -hmm. and thereby introducing what you call another gospel. Are you seeing that? Mm -hmm. 
So he says, <laughs> and other Jews disassembled likewise with him. Paul had, Paul, Paul, hey, Paul, he says, in so much that even Barnabas <laughs> was also carried away with their what? Dissimulation. Barnabas was also carried what? Away. With their hypocrisy, yeah? Another one says dissimulation, another one says hypocrisy. Are you seeing that? Barnabas is supposed to be the guy who came with Paul. Mm. Even him, he has been what? De influenced. <laughs> or influenced. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, have you ever been in that place? <laughs> yeah, I'm asking. Mm -hmm. That just because, not because, you don't examine your beliefs, but just because somebody has acted in a particular manner and you're in a pose. Even you began acting likewise, mm -hmm. contrary to the things you say you are teaching or preaching. Mm -hmm. Our gospel in Nairobi is technically like that. Mm -hmm. So when I reach this particular place, let me show you something. When I reach this particular place, I normally say there is something in the church culture. Now they call it the Christ culture. Forgive me for saying Christ culture because actually it's really there, really. Mm -hmm. Christ is the center of everything else. Yeah. And this is how you begin to see that it's possible for us to have a subculture in the sanctuary or in a Bible study that is more dominant and more powerful than the Christ culture. Mm -hmm. When you go and talk to somebody and they have been converted, yeah? Mm -hmm. If you can pause and say, hey, this guy, I don't think I can invite him to our church. I don't think he'll fit in. What is that barrier point that makes him not being able to what? To fit in. It means there's a culture or a subculture in that sanctuary with that Bible study that makes it's impossible for him to interact with that real culture, which is the Christ culture. Mm -hmm. And that culture has become dominant and powerful. Mm -hmm. It has taken over. Mm -hmm. We've been in places like those ones. Yes. And I say, hey, uh, where are you? <laughs> yeah, the guy might not even understand that. <laughs> yeah. He might not understand, so I think it's good to, you know, it's good to be wise. Mm -hmm. That's what we say. Mm. <laughs> it's good to be wise. So it's possible for us to be in spaces or even be the embodiment like Peter. We, we are laughing at Peter right now. We can tactfully do what? Disassociate ourselves with people who we have brought into the faith mm -hmm. but are unable to accommodate in our culture. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, it's, it's possible for us. If Christ's character is powerful, then it should work everywhere. Mm -hmm. It should work everywhere. But the packaging of what we call our gospel in our sanctuaries or in our Bible studies or in our spiritual centers, has come to a point where that thing, the brand, has become too powerful than the real Christ culture. Mm. And some people can't fit, mm. number one. In fact, it has become that thing that makes us say, we are like this, and those ones are like that. Mm. Yeah, we know we normally used to fight in revivals about denominationalism, but right now it's really working around what? We have moved from de denominationalism to branding. Our brand is not like theirs. Mm. Our brand is hotter. Mm. They need to style up. Mm. If, we, if, 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 if I was them, mm -hmm. I would have. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing that? Yeah. So we need to reintroduce. We need to introduce. We need to go back and say, hey, no, why, where is that? Why did we leave the ball? Where did he drop the ball mm. of culture? Where is the Christ culture? Mm. How do we mitigate when we begin to discover that our branding culture is actually overtaking the Christ culture to the point where some people can't fit. Some people can't be consumers of the Christ we carry. It happens everywhere. Even in the court you are staying. Yeah? <laughs> Even in the court you are staying, there's, a, there's some mannerisms you can, you can, you can brand you around yourself so that it becomes, it becomes justifiable for you not to share the gospel you carry. <laughs> Those mannerisms eventually become what? A culture. People, everybody knows. Have you, you have been in these courts where everybody's a Christian, but nobody's talking to each other. Their family brands are more powerful than the Christ brand. <laughs> People only talk to you when they want jumpers to start their cars. <laughs> yeah, they come and knock and say, hey, excuse me, hey, are you guys okay? okay. Uh, I was wondering, do you have spanner number six? <laughs> anyway. There some of you are laughing. Is either you've been asked or you have gone to ask. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look at this. So Paul is actually saying, now you can see now he's going to the meat of the matter. He mm. said, 
Galatia has an issue. I went there and taught. I've been there three times as a journey. I've established something. Judaizers have come in. But now Peter, the big apostle, also has come in. And he's playing the same card of the Judaizers. And with it, Peter is also influencing everybody else. Mm. So that it's actually theology by influence, by action. His active participation is actually making them have a different perspective of what the works of Christ are supposed to be what. Mm. So look at that. He says, for though... So Paul begins to say... That is verse what? Why were we? 15. Now we are going to 14. But when I saw, yeah, he says, but when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all. He didn't even wait. <laughs> if thou, you see, he had given them time. Mm. Give credit to Paul. If you look at chapter one, I went privately and I talked to him. Yeah. So Peter understands this thing. I've gone there again after 14 years mm. and I've set them apart and I've explained to them. Mm. Now they have given me the right hand of fellowship. Sure. Now me, I'm laboring in the field and this guy is coming to spoil the work mm. which he gave me the right hand of fellowship for. I mean, all, we, we love Peter. Mm -hmm. Just to tell you that even a great apostle like that can, can be in this, this such a kind of what? Mm -hmm. uh, gospel culture. Mm -hmm. Conflict, yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. All of us, no, 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 none of us is, is excusable if you could say so. Mm -hmm. I said unto Peter before them all, if thou being a Jew, lives like, live, live as after the manner of the Gentile and, do, and, and, and not as the Jews, why do you compel the Gentiles to live as you do? Mm -hmm. You, you can come and do stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You have the freedom to come and eat. And eat. <laughs> but now you don't want them to do what? To be free. To be free. Mm -hmm. You're not telling them they must do this, they must do this. Mm -hmm. That's a contradiction of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So it says, we who are Jews by nature are not sinners of the Gentiles. Knowing that a man is not what? Justified by works of the law. So he's saying, Paul, he's telling Peter, we, you know, we are Jews, Jews by nature, which means you can follow the script if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. We can go to Moses, we can go to the law if you want to. Yeah? Mm -hmm. That's by nature. But we also know that we have encountered Jesus Christ, that we are not justified by the works or the heritage which we came from. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by what? The faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be what? Justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be what? Be justified. Mm. I see Paul's argument. So he has an argument. He's telling Peter, even you, you know, I know you followed Jesus. You saw him in the flesh. Mm. You walked on water, Peter. Mm. You denied him. You went, you cried, you came back. Mm. You are the chief guy. You were told to take care of us, yeah? Mm. But you even know that what justifies you to be Peter, the apostle right now, mm -hmm. is not the things you are following when you are what, a Jew. Yeah. The justification of faith for us is what? The following of who? Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's, that's why Paul is coming for. It's not by works. Mm. But, if, but if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? No, God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, what did they destroy? It? What did the cross destroy? The Lord. Yeah. If I build again the things which I destroy, I make myself what? A transgressor. So you can see Paul is saying, when I, when I go back to the things the cross destroyed, mm. which in that particular context was what? The law. Mm -hmm. Paul is saying, I become a transgressor. Mm. Which means he says, I become a sinner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you understanding? And religion has this interesting high moral horn, that it tries to put other things around what Christ does. Mm. And if you fail on those things, but Christ, yeah. you are failed all. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So if I build again, and Paul is telling us when you do that, you become what? A transgressor. Mm -hmm. for, I, for I through the law am what? Dead to the law that I might live unto God. The law took me to the cross. Mm -hmm. I'm, the law took me what? To the cross. Yes. He says, I am crucified. Now you know where that scripture comes from. Yeah. We love reading it. Yes. <laughs> I am crucified with what? With Christ. Nevertheless, I live. So this is Paul's response to this guy as well, following the Judaizers. Mm -hmm. I am crucified with Christ. Why am I crucified with Christ? I'm crucified with Christ to, to be dead to the things mm -hmm. of the law. Mm -hmm. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, what? I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who what? 
loved me. Remember we talked about being born in a family, in a family of love, who loved me and what? Gave himself for me. Why would God give, the question he was asking, why would God give himself for you and not talk to you? Why would God give himself for you and let you just slide away? That commitment of laying down his life is also a commitment of what? Making sure you hear. So we have to be confident of the fact that when he's leading us, he lets us what? Speak to us. Look at that. He says, loved me and gave himself for me. I do not do what? Frustrate the grace of God. Now, we love using that scripture sometimes off calf. If you look at the context of Paul, Paul is saying, when I have understood what it means to die to the law, yeah? Mm -hmm. And I'm embracing the Christ who died for me, mm -hmm. yeah? I move away from frustrating the grace. Frustrating the grace there is, I am not going back to the things that I died to. Mm. Which in this case is what? The things that Judaizers are trying to what? To bring back. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Why was Christ dying, Peter? Why was Christ dying? Mm. <laughs> Why was he dying, Peter? Yeah, and That's what the religion does. It tries to do it. The Bible says crucify him again, which means it was not a final blow. Are we okay there? Yes. Uh, it seems like we are doing well, at least. Yeah. Yeah. I might actually achieve my deadline. <laughs> so now, that is chapter 2. Chapter 2, you can see what happens. He's now beginning to get into the meaty of the things. Mm -hmm. Judaizers have come. There's work I have done, and the Judaizers have come. But I have a case study, mm -hmm. and the case study is Peter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have given Peter respect. I have gone to see him. After three years of Arabia, I snuck in. I was with him for 15 days. Can you imagine a 15-day conference one-on-one? -on -one? Mm -hmm. can, you being, can you imagine being on Zoom with somebody for 15 days? <laughs> <laughs> Just explain this thing that I was taught. Mm -hmm. And then now you, you, then you, you go back again after 14 years. And then you set them apart again and talk to him. You'd expect this guy has understood you, yeah? Mm -hmm. Now he comes, it is clear, the same Christ who's, who's doing a work in Peter, to send him to the Jews. He's the same God who's working in Paul to send him to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Now, I am working with the Gentiles in Antioch. Why would he come to Antioch and become what? The minister of misery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the minister who actually influences people of the work we are both doing for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. That's what is making Paul get miffed. Mm -hmm. And so when we hear and read things like, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I. Sometimes we do it and we say that scripture but we don't understand the context. Mm -hmm. What are you crucified to? What have you died to? Mm -hmm. You, right now in the 21st century, 2023, when you say, I am crucified with Christ, what is this thing that you have died to? Mm -hmm. Because it's possible there are some things we are believing right now that are awakening works. Mm -hmm. That they are awakening works and making you, learn, making you leave your salvation, salvation plus other things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now, that is chapter 2. Now he has moved from Peter, and now he's ever blazing to the Galatians. <laughs> so you see the sequence. Chapter 1, chapter 2, now we're in chapter 3. Eh? Chapter 3, he says, Oh, foolish Galatians. Who has done what? Okay, let's... Who has, done, who has bewitched you? Yeah. So who has bewitched you or hypnotized you? Who, another word is, we, know, we, we love this word in English, called who has fascinated you? Yeah. Who has given you a false representation? Yeah. Who has maligned you? <laughs> yeah. He says, who has bewitched you? Who has hypnotized you? Who has mesmerized you? Yeah. He says that you should not look at this. So hypnosis. So you're saying me, I'm not hypnotized. Me, I'm an Arab nice, uh, good Christian. I don't do those things of bewitching and hypnotize. Mm. Look at, oh, look, let's read the text. He says that you should not obey the truth. Mm. So if you don't know the truth, how do you know even if you're obeying it? He mm. says there's actually a hypnotic spirit. And I'm not saying, but I'm not, I'm not the apostle of hypnotic spirit. <laughs> Because there are many spirits, yeah? Mm. But there might be a teaching, or there might be a way of believing that does what? That always disallows you from obeying the truth. Mm. It says, who has hypnotizing? You should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been what? Evidently, evidently set forth what? Crucified among you. 
Paul has a way of introducing the cross in interesting spaces. Yeah. Jesus has evidently been crucified, which means if Jesus Christ has evidently been crucified among you, it means there's some things that are dead. Mm -hmm. What died? So you have to ask yourself, the day I got born again, what died? What died that, and that has come through the back door mm. <laughs> and has been marinated and is looking nice? Mm. And I'm saying, ah, now I'm wiser. <laughs> you know, that, that time I was a child, now I'm a mature man, mm. I can do whatever, you see? So he says, evidently set forth, crucified among you. He's asking, he's asking again, verse 2, this only would I learn of you. Did you receive the Spirit? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law? Is it possible that Paul is also lending us a hint that the reason why there's absence of spirit or ac absence of the efficacy of spirit mm -hmm. is that people are clearly doing a lot of works? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe I'm... Oh, am I doing a monologue? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is sounding like a soliloquy, yeah? <laughs> yeah, it's just me, just... <laughs> he says... Is it, is it possible that the absence of spirit is also an indication of the fact that we are just deep in works? Mm. And this works because, you know, works have to be pyrotechnic. <laughs> <laughs> For those who understand that, they have to be staged, they have to be, there's a way they have to be colorful. Mm. They come both in RGB and CMYK put together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he says, by works. Yeah, are you so foolish? He says, by works. Yeah. Let me, let me look at this. What he says, by doing labor, in, you know, you're preoccupied. You took preoccupied with things that are extra to Christ. Mm. The things that are extra to Christ are normally very juicy, very nice. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> That's why today I'm forcing you to read the entire epistle. <laughs> Be before you go and read a commentary on the book, let's read Galatians. Yeah. Yeah. Before you go and watch I mean. <laughs> so it says, uh, it says, This only would I learn of you received either spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Now you can see, how does the spirit come? By the hearing of faith. Mm -hmm. Let him who has what? An ear. Yes, Hear what? What the spirit. Mark chapter 4. He says, The measure of growing from 30 fold, 60 fold, and 100 fold is what? A function of what? Yeah. Hearing. Let him who has an ear hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Mm -hmm. And whatever measure you meet, ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. Whatever measure you meet, Mark chapter 4. Mm -hmm. It means whatever attention you give to the acreage of Spirit, the Spirit's voice, is the same that will be meted unto you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law? Or by the hearing of it? Oh, I was here, Galatians. I was here with you. You saw how the Spirit was moving amongst you. Mm -hmm. Was I telling you anything about the works of the law? Mm -hmm. Did I tell you, do this, don't do this, do this, do this, do this? Did I tell you, did I give you a whole rota of the things you used to do as Jews? No. Hmm. So now why are you going there and thinking the Spirit will show up? Yeah. That's what Paul is actually asking. Mm. Are you so foolish? <laughs> <laughs> Having begun in what? The Spirit. Are you now made perfect? It means the word there is complete. Hmm. By the flesh. And when I told you about flesh, I told you about the spirit, Numa, the soul, Suke, and then the body, Soma, yeah? Then I told you something called Sarx, which is the flesh, the principle of sin, the principle of fallenness. The principle that always produces what? Works. You're always looking to compensate for that gap we are talking about, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That gap, we're always looking for other methods of filling it, other than Christ himself, because we are actually saying Christ is not sufficient enough. Have you ever gone to wedding negotiations and you're welcome with prayer and choruses? <laughs> <laughs> and then they say things like, but now, <laughs> disclaimers, eh? Disclaimers. They say, now, you know, also our traditions are very important. Yeah. And we're not saying we don't believe in God. We're not saying we don't. And then before you realize there's a coup, yeah. there's a coup and now you're fighting. Yeah? You're telling your bride to be text, sending them texts if you don't do something here. <laughs> Even you now you've been reduced to the flesh. If you don't do something, <laughs> I'm leaving. 
So he says, are you so foolish having begun in the spirit? So it's possible, Paul is telling us, this is not just a threat to the Galatians, it's even to us. It's possible for us to begin in the spirit and try to complete the things we began in spirit by the flesh. It's possible. And by the way, Paul is telling them, you, you didn't forget, it's just that you are what? Hypnotized. There's data that came that mesmerized you. There's this new deep revelation that came that took off and took over. Because human beings are beings of knowledge by nature. So you're always looking for this new revy. <laughs> he said, Kim, have you suffered so many things in vain? You guys have gone through stuff. You don't understand that. You've gone through stuff. You don't understand that. Have you suffered so many things in vain? He, therefore, that ministers to you the spirit. Look at that, yeah? Ministers to you what? The spirit. And what? Works miracles. So you can see, absence of miracles could actually be absence of what? Spirit. spirit. Mm -hmm. And works miracles among you. Does he do it by works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Again, hearing of faith. Mm -hmm. Not make, not make a note in your notebook and say, hearing of faith, I'm going to go and study hearing of faith. Paul is very crazy about hearing of faith. Uh, Romans 10, 17, by faith, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word, word of God. God. So by hearing of faith, which faith is he talking about? There's a new faith in town. <laughs> this faith in town is what? Jesus Christ, him crucified mm -hmm. and raised again. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So that's the Jesus I came with to you. And that's why miracles are happening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even Abraham, your father, longed to yeah, look at this, verse 6. Now Abraham is being introduced. Why is Abraham being introduced? Because this is a contrast between the Judaizers' perspective of things. Mm -hmm. Judaizers believe in Abraham Gangho. Mm -hmm. We're the fathers of Abraham. They told Jesus like that. John chapter 8. We're, we are the children of Abraham. And Jesus told them, if you were children of Abraham, you would know me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, go on and read that court case, by the way, when Jesus is de dealing with these guys. Yes. So if you are children of Abraham, you would what? You would know me. Isn't, what do you think? So what are you saying we are children of? <laughs> he says, you are the, you're, you're the father of the devil. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. He says, and he tells them, he, tell, he told them, <laughs> before Abraham was, I, I am. Yes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> come slowly, come slowly. <laughs> come slowly. What do you mean, before what? Before Abraham, yeah, yeah you are yeah. the father. So you are the father, you are devil. Mm. He says he's a murderer from the beginning. Mm. He's telling them, that's the reason why you want to kill me. Mm. You're just practicing your nature. Mm. And nature comes from being ginned. Mm. Yeah. So the one who's ginning that, those, and that thought is what? Your father, who's the devil? He's a murderer from the beginning. Yeah. He said, in him there is no truth. Hate. John 8, 4, 4. That's how you remember. Yeah. John 8, 4, 4. Not John 8, not John CBC. John 8, 4, 4. <laughs> that's, how, that's how you remember. Yeah. So you're the father. That, that's when they wanted to stone him. Yeah. yeah. But before Abraham was, I am. He said, you were just born the other day, and you're saying. <laughs> and the Bible says, even him himself said, Abraham longed to see my day. Yeah. <laughs> that is, ooh. Oh, anyway. So he now introduces Abraham. So he's saying, now these guys who are Judaizers are strong believers of what? Abraham. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted for him for what? Yeah, Abraham did not follow works. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah, these guys believe in Abraham. That's a big deal with them, guys. I'm telling you the truth. That's a big deal with them. Now, look at Abraham himself. Now, if you go to Romans chapter 4, that's what I'm telling you, Galatians is a miniature romance. If you go to Romans chapter 4, you shall see now the documentation of Abraham. Yeah. So Abraham believed God. And then Paul says in Romans chapter 4, if it was for works, he would have been given what? Payment. Yeah. He be given payment. But because he believed in faith, he was given what? Righteousness. Mm -hmm. Something he could not earn by works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he was justified. By, so they said, the just shall be, shall live by faith. Have you seen that? Mm -hmm. So he says, even as Abraham believed God, which means the labor of Abraham was believing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the investment you make in this journey is believing the right thing. Mm -hmm. He says, no... Even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted for him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of what? Of Ab Do you know why that is scandalous? Mm -hmm. Now Paul is going to scandal region. Mm -hmm. Because these are Gentiles called Galatians. Yes. Now they have believed what? In Jesus they have believed in Christ. Mm -hmm. 
And Paul is actually saying, by virtue of the fact that you have believed in Christ, mm -hmm. even you, you're the children of Abraham. <laughs> A Judaizer will say, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> now, that is, now that is your truth. Me, I have my truth. <laughs> but it, is not, it, is not, it does not escape the fact that even us sometimes, we get into those polemics. Yeah. So he says, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, like you who have believed in Christ, the same are what? Children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing, foreseeing, the scripture what? Foresaw, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen. That's again another scandalous thing. The scripture foreseeing, so now he's bringing scripture from their text. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. The scripture foreseeing, because which scripture is he talking about? He's talking about what? The Torah. The Torah, yeah? yeah. Foreseeing what? That God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, in thee shall all nations be what? Yes. Be blessed. Yes. So you can see when God is talking about Abraham and I'll bless you, mm -hmm. it's not the blessing we think about breakthroughs we are trying to look for. <laughs> when God is talking about in you, the nations will be blessed. Mm -hmm. Paul is clarifying and classifying. He is saying it is the coming to a point where people begin to see the reality of Christ. Yeah. The only true God and Jesus Christ who yes. I have sent. Yes. That is the blessing. Mm. You know, salvation has really been diminished, diminished mm. to the point where we think that's why we look for extra things. <laughs> anyway, so it says, and scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In you shall all nations be, what? be blessed. Which means, Abraham, I'll use you as a vein, as a conduit, to draw in what? Every other nation. Mm -hmm. Are you understanding? Mm -hmm. So then, they which be of faith are blessed, are blessed with faithful Abraham. So now that is, if a Judaizer is there and is listening, he's seething. If you watch the, if you've ever read any Asterix book, you see that, thing, that the nose getting red. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> they are seething. By the way, the Hebraic th thinking had very interesting expressions of God. In fact, there are places where they say, and God became angry. If you look at the original Hebrew Bible, say, and God's nose turned red. <laughs> That's how they know how anger is expressed. Okay, it says, for many... It says, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone that continues not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Are you seeing that? Yeah. That continues not. What does that mean? It means even if you are given the law and given 10,000 years to fulfill, you can't. Yeah. Are, you see, are you seeing that? Yeah. And in, a, in an attempt to be able to follow that thing to... To completion, you'll just be gaining, the bonga points will be gaining a call curses. Mm. But Jesus Christ is the only one who can come and fulfill the law. If you look at 2 Corinthians chapter, I think 3, when they're talking about Moses and the end of the law, Moses with a veil, they were not, they were not able to say Moses came and veiled himself, yeah? And it says they were not able to see the end of the law. What is the end of the law? The end of the law is Christ fulfilling the law at the cross. So they were not able to see the reality of the crucifixion, the resurrection, and the ascension. So, so, so if you go to chapter 4, they say, and because of that, the enemy always is doing what? Every time they countenance Christ, he puts what? A veil before them. They're not able to see the end of the law. It's happening until now. And, are, and that's the reason why when you look at church, how we run church, we are so overly intoxicated with the old Levitical order. Because it's pompous. Yeah. It's ritualistic. It gives you a sense of power. Uh -huh. But it cannot see the end of the law. It cannot see what Christ finished. Yeah. Because when it sees what Christ finished, you have to lay down all you gathered in the Levitical order and put it down. Yeah. You have to lay down all control. Yes. And, agree at, and, agree for, and agree that you are dead in Christ. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it says... It says, where was I now? Cast is everyone that continues not in all things that which are written in the book of the law to do them. Verse 11, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. Look at that. That's Paul saying, no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live what? By faith. That's what, I don't know if you have ever watched Luther. Mm -hmm. You ever watched Josephians? Uh, Luther, it's a very nice uh, 
It's a very nice movie if you can watch. You know, the, and he's climbing the stairs and he's being told this for every whatever throw a coin, your relatives are released. Mm. I know we love those, we love those theatrics. If you ever read a book, a Russian, Russian literature called, a book called The Brothers Karamazov, you will see again, there's a character there uh, called the Grand, uh, in, the Grand Inquisitor. There's a chapter there. And there's this guy who's doing interesting Mazinga Umbus or miracles. And then suddenly Christ walks into the room. And this guy is telling Christ, why are you coming too soon? What's wrong with you? You're spoiling the business now. <laughs> You're spoiling it. You know, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to show these guys what you can do. And you are coming in the midst of this thing and spoiling this thing. Which means if the real Christ shows up, he spoils the business. Okay. <laughs> with the, <laughs> Okay. So he says, but, that, but no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live what? By faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that does them shall live in them. Which means you'll suffer the consequences of the law uh. if you go with the law. That's why Christ would say things like, if you, are, you want men to please you or men to praise you. He says, you have you already received your reward. Yeah. What are you waiting for? Because mm -hmm. you have received the reward of what? Of sight. Not a reward of what? Of faith. Yeah. Sometimes you're in spaces in your life trying to do the work of God with no audience to clap for you or give you affirmations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. And yeah, verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from what? The curse of the law. Being made a curse for us. The principle of substitution. 2 mm -hmm. Corinthians 8, he being rich became poor so that you in his Rich poverty might become what? Rich. Principle of substitution. Mm -hmm. So he has become a curse for you so that he can do it. You can enjoy that. What is the opposite of a curse? Blessing. Mm -hmm. So what is the blessing you are receiving there? That's a blessing there. The blessing is actually the nature of Christ, mm -hmm. which is actually exemplified in this book as what? His righteousness. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing that? Mm -hmm. Christ has redeemed us. He has bought us back. He has gone to the what? The trade fair and bought you back. <laughs> He's bidding. Every time people are bidding, trying to, to do slavery issues here. He says, that is mine. I'll buy him. Yeah. Second guy comes. That's mine. In fact, just wrap up all these guys. Yeah. <laughs> they're all, they all mine. Yeah. <laughs> are you seeing that? Are you going to be able to afford these people? Yes. How are you going to pay for it? With my life. Uh. And everybody keeps quiet. And the market is over. Mm -hmm. No more trading. Yeah. Unless you want to go back and sell yourself again. <laughs> Are you seeing that? Yeah. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. Why? That the blessing, why? That the blessing of Abraham <laughs> yeah, might come on to the Gentiles, because Paul is in his jurisdiction for the, what? the Gentiles. The blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles through what? Christ Jesus Christ, Jesus. that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Okay. The promise of the Spirit is received through faith, not through works. Mm. All of us love things of Spirit, but sometimes in wanting or desiring the things of Spirit, we try to machine them to work out. Verse 15, brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet it is, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or adds unto therefore. It's a covenant for us, guys. But it was not affected by us, it was affected by Christ, yeah? He says, he says, if, if it's confirmed, but yes, yes, yet if it be confirmed, no man can what? This covenant has been confirmed. If, if you now go to the book of Hebrews chapter 6, when God is talking to Abraham, he said by two things, by two immutable things. Mm -hmm. yeah? Seeing that there was nobody to promise to swear by, he swore by himself. And then he did an oath, yeah? So who is he promising? Abraham. Abraham is a man, it's true. But it's not Abraham's working, it's God's working. Mm -hmm. So Abraham cannot disannul what God promised. Are you understanding? Yes. The truth, Jesus Christ died for you. You cannot disannul that. Mm -hmm. You cannot, there is no court of appeal. You can go and do it. Repeal that clause. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you understanding? Yeah. That is how sure, because God says, I'll back it up. I'll give, I'll, I'll lend, I will lend my eternal reputation for this work. Let mm us -hmm. see anybody else who has highest bidder. And there was silence in heaven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it says, now listen to this. What time is it, by the way? 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So we stop, eh? Let us see, let us see, let us see. Okay, let's just, we'll, we'll do until chapter 3, and then we go. He says, now, so now he's introduced Abraham, the main character. Abraham always seemed to appear, Hebrews 4. He, no, Hebrews 6, Romans 4. Abraham is a, is a big deal to the Jews. Mm -hmm. And it's also a big deal to us. Mm -hmm. I understand, it's a big deal. He's the connector. And God understood that and said, I'll capture Abraham first because I know these guys. <laughs> They'll believe in this guy like crazy. Mm. But I'm setting them up for there. <laughs> mm. I understand it. We are Abraham's children. Because these guys were guys who believed in pedigree. Mm. Yeah? Sons of Abraham. You guys, when you're growing up, you did that. You did Father Abraham. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> 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 now, listen to this. So let's go slowly a bit. So he wants to give an illustration. Paul wants to give an illustration here. And I'm sorry, 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 guys. I'm, just, I'm going too fast into this, but at least you're getting the gist here. So Paul, Paul, Abraham is the case study here. So look at this. Now to Abraham and what? His seed. So he's beginning something there because he wants to justify. Paul is a guy, when he's developing his argument, when he brings in a particular character, he wants to justify and give case studies to his argument. So now we're at Abraham, yeah? He says, now to Abraham and his what? Seed. Okay, so he says, now unto Abraham and his seed. Uh, he says, were the promises made? So, promises were made what? To the seed, yeah? This is Galatians you are reading. Okay, promises made. He does not say, look at that. He says, he says not to seeds, plural. So it's not what? Seeds. seeds. But what? Seed. So he says, he does not make sense, not to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is what? Christ. So this seed is what? Christ. Which means to Christ were the what? Promises made. Are you understanding? Yeah. So when you say your inheritance in Christ, a bigger chunk of your inheritance are what? Promises. The promises. So I know when I ask Christians, what are the promises of the New Testament? And if we are clueless about it, it means we do not know our inheritance. <laughs> we do not know our acreage. You are living on an eighth, and God left you what? He says this, he says, unto thy seed, he says, unto thy seed, which is what? Christ. So Christ is the seed, and to the seed were given what? Promises. Are you seeing that? And this I say, and this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ. Okay, so there's something called what? A covenant. This covenant was what? Confirmed. Confirmed means what? Established. Eh? Established. So what does he say? It was confirmed? By God. Okay, so it was confirmed by who? By God. How did he confirm it? In Christ. Are you seeing that? Yeah. That's how you're studying. Everybody should get a whiteboard in their house. <laughs> so there's a covenant that was confirmed by God in Christ. So look at this. New Testament, Old Testament, you could say, I have this covenant with God. <laughs> New Testament, you might not necessarily have that luxury, but there's a better thing. You say, oh, God has this covenant with Christ concerning me. You don't see the difference. Old Testament, I have this covenant with God. God will remain steadfast. You can walk away. Mm -hmm. And you disannul it. Mm -hmm. But New Testament is God giving promises to who? To Christ. Mm -hmm. Who is Christ to us? The one who we have been crucified with. Mm -hmm. So we, be, we become part of that word, covenant. But the agreement is between what? The father and his son. Mm -hmm. Or the father and the seed. Mm -hmm. Not seeds. Is the father and the seed so that we as seeds can come out. Mm. Are you seeing that? Mm. So this covenant cannot, can never be disannulled. Mm. Because it's not because between you and him. <laughs> it's between you and your bigger brother, elder brother. Mm. <laughs> and the elder brother was crucified as the pure lamb and also as the scapegoat. Mm. Mm -hmm. So every attempt to add to your salvation on anything works to do anything to make you feel like you're justified in this faith <sighs> is a futile attempt. It's puny. Mm. But it can mesmerize you. It can hypnotize you. Mm. And then you can begin a new order of life or a new order of salvation. 
that is by works, unfortunately. So he's bringing in Abraham. So he says, and this is, this I say that the covenant which was confirmed before of God in Christ, he says the law which was 430 years after cannot what? Disannul. So he's saying Abraham came before the law. Are you seeing that? Yes. He said, Abraham came before the law. But when the, when the conversations were happening there, you see, we see Genesis as just God speaking to Abraham. Paul is telling us there are multi, multi layers of conversations. As God is speaking to Abraham, He's not telling Abraham, look at, he said, look at the details, look at your word, look at, look at your, your Bible. <laughs> look, at, look at your Old Testament. It's okay. When God is speaking to Abraham, he's not talking about Abraham and seeds. He's talking to Abraham and seed. You guys missed the details. You missed, you added an S. <laughs> Remove the S, it's a seed. He says, he says, and this I say, the covenant was confirmed before the, so God is speaking to Abraham even before the law came. Yeah? So the law comes later. After these guys have come through Egypt, then Moses comes on the scene. Mm -hmm. Then the law comes in, yeah? Mm -hmm. Are you understanding? But Abraham already, which we are saying we are sons of, is the, is the progenitor of our pedigree. Mm -hmm. This guy already ha was working in righteousness without works. Mm -hmm. There is no law he did. Mm -hmm. Abraham did not participate in that law mm -hmm. to become Abraham, the one who was blessed. Mm -hmm. He just believed God and God gave him what? Righteousness. Why do you think the law that Moses was given will give you the credentials yeah. uh -huh. to be righteous? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when God, Abraham was doing that, what did he believe? He believed that God was giving him promises to a seed. Mm -hmm. Not Isaac. Isaac is a type. Mm -hmm. But what? To Christ. Yes. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. So he's actually using the argument of Abraham again. It always works. <laughs> so he says, uh, so this law cannot disannul and, and it cannot make the promise of what? Of none effect. Mm -hmm. This is the wisdom of God. This is the wisdom of God. So let's say the devil is sitting at the back of the class trying to study this thing. Okay, so he has called Abraham. Okay, good. So he has promised Abraham. Okay, so that thing has come from Abraham. It has gone to Isaac. Okay, let us see. Oh, I can see here. It's gonna, this is where he, it gets spoiled. Now there's eyes, there's Esther and all. Oh, this is going <laughs> to get spoiled. Now I need to influence the process here. Mm. One, this guy has to steal it. <laughs> it's the seed. It's the battle of the seed. Mm. Not seeds. It's the battle of the seed. Mm -hmm. Are you understanding? Mm. You see how it's going? Yeah. So anyway, so he says... Uh, for if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of what? Promise. So it says, if you get the inheritances, if you get the promise, if you get the result of promises through the law, mm -hmm. then there's no longer a promise. Mm -hmm. It's because of what? what? You are, you are labored. Mm -hmm. So you deserve to be paid. Mm -hmm. He says, if the inheritance be of law, it is no more what? Of promise. But God gave it to Abraham by what? By promise. Because when God was speaking to Abraham, he did not tell Abraham, follow this law. He told Abraham, I am promising you, I'm going to do A, B, C, D. Mm -hmm. Yeah? That's what Abraham was hoping against hope. You ever heard of that? Yeah. He said, hmm. God who calls things which are not as if they? They are. What do you think that was? You know, most of us think it's a confession language. Oh, Lord, I'm calling this situation prosperous in <laughs> Jesus' name. I'm calling this thing which is not as if it were. Lord, I'm calling this thing what? Prosperous. Abraham is standing there, he's been promised. Abraham is being told, do you, can you, do you believe, Abraham, there's going to be a time where you'll have not just son, but sons? Mm. Jesus Christ, seeing the joy set before him, he endured the cross, so all of us can be... But Abraham, the Gentiles, will come to the fold mm -hmm. and, be, and be called by my name. Mm -hmm. hey, Lord, really? Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I promise you, Abraham, I promise you. But how would I know these things are going to be through? I promise you, it's me. I'm going to do what? I'm going to lay down my reputation. Mm -hmm. I'm going to back up that promise. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you say so, me, I'm okay with it. So what am I supposed to do? So now that you have believed Abraham, you're righteous. <laughs> <laughs> you're righteous, Abraham. <laughs> I, I, did, I didn't need to do anything. Uh -uh. I didn't need to bring an offering. No, no, Abraham, you're righteous. An offering. I'm the one who's going to slaughter my son. What do you mean offering? <laughs> Uh, it's, too, it's too good to be true. Yes. No, 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 Abraham, it's too good that it's true. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. 
So now Paul begins to ask us something. Mm -hmm. He says, it is inevitable for us to ignore the law. So he's asking, then wherefore serveth the law? So why was the law brought in anyway then? Yeah. If God had already promised Abraham. Mm -hmm. He says it was added because of transgressions. <laughs> <laughs> Till the seed, till the seed. Hmm. There was a transgression at some point. Remember that? Yeah. There was a transgression that happened somewhere. Mm. So the seed of the woman shall do what? Yeah. Shall crush. The seed of the serpent shall bite. Yeah? There's a transgression. Till, till the seed. He said, till the seed. Not till the seeds. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. Are you seeing that? Yeah. And it was for what? It was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now, a mediator is not what? A mediator of one. But God is one. Why was there mediation between two people, yet God is one? Yeah. Who was mediating? Was it, where was that mediation happening? Mm -hmm. Are you understanding that? Mm -hmm. A mediation is supposed to be between two people, but God is cutting a covenant between him and him. And him. Mm. <laughs> How now? Mm. <laughs> yeah? Is the law then against the promises of God? So, no, no. God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily, righteousness should have been by the law. The law was not giving life. Mm -mm. Second Corinthians chapter 3, he says, the law is spiritual, but it kills. Mm -hmm. And you know we love things that are spiritual, that they, but they kill. Yeah. Because all of us have pain points. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he says, but the scripture has concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given what? To them that believe. All of people, everybody there was under sin. Are you understanding? Mm -hmm. Everybody was under sin. And the law, the law came to amplify sin. So all of us were trying to do it. Even right now, we are born again, but sometimes we go the low way. We think the low way. Mm -hmm. So when we go the low way, we are always condemned. Mm -hmm. Sin consciousness comes before, before, because we are taking an option that is not of Christ. Yeah, it, it might be by wax, it might be trying to justify how we pray. You know, I think I should grind in prayer to be deep with God. Mm. Should I pray to be deep with God? Yes. But should I grind with the prayer to be deep with God? No. no. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I think that. Yeah. Can I wake up at three to pray? Yes. But should it be a grinding? No. Because if my son comes three o'clock in the night and knocks through my door. <laughs> Yeah, I'm his father. Eh? Mm -hmm. Say, Dad, I'm feeling. Will I say, Ah, now go and sleep. It'll just be okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I'll open the door. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I see that. <laughs> so, where are we at? Verse 22. But the scripture has concluded that all under sin that the promise of faith of Jesus Christ might be what? Given to them that believe. So, the promise is for everybody that what? Believes. But before faith came, we were kept under what? The law. Shut up unto the what? Unto faith, which could what? Believe. Reveal at once. So Paul is explaining that whole journey between when the law was given to Moses until no. the cross. Mm. That is the law era or the law age. Mm. It governed a lot of things. It became the instrument of what? Of governance. We shall see in chapter 4 next week. We shall see how it governed. So guys were trying to be... If, don't forget when the fall of Adam. Yeah? There is what we call a sin nature. Are you seeing that? Mm. A sin nature that has now infiltrated this place. And then now God brings in something called what? The law. So it's a sin nature trying to work out the law. It won't work. Mm. So man has to come to a point where he realizes, I'm helpless. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm helpless. So from Moses to Christ, they're trying everything. They're trying everything. Keeping the Sabbath, doing whatever. It's not mm. cracking. <laughs> so it's Christ who's coming to do what? To fulfill. Mm -hmm. It requires somebody who is sinless. To come and fulfill this. And once he fulfills it, he can say, I'll lay down my life. So nobody takes my life from me. Okay. I'm not being slaughtered. So I can start struggling and whatever. No, no, me, I'm laying down my life on your behalf. He says that the prince of this world has come and he has nothing in me. Are you seeing that? And then he says, now I have laid down on your behalf. Now I'm giving you my righteousness. I'm giving it to you. Say, only that. Jesus, only that. They can't, nothing more. <laughs> or we start saying things like, Jesus, oh, I'm not deserving of this righteousness, Jesus. 
What are you saying? <laughs> I know you're not deserving. That's why I'm giving it to you. But now as I'm giving it to you. Don't worry, you're deserving because I'm actually dying for you. You can't say I'm not deserving. Yet he's dying for you. He's dying for you. You're deserving of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's the one who's laying down his life for you. Anyway, I think we shall have to stop there. And then we shall start again from verse 20. And then we shall see how it ends. But does it, does it make sense? Yeah. This is, yeah. Um, maybe if I didn't understand, yeah. what are the promises in the New Testament? <laughs> that's, that's your homework. <laughs> <laughs> There are many promises in the New Testament. The number one, we have the new nature of Christ. That's a promise. We are told now we'll become children of Abraham. Mm. Yeah? Peter says things like, now we have a place to hide. And we are hid with Christ in God. Mm-hmm. Uh, Peter tells us things like, by his stripes we were healed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. We're seated in heavenly place with Christ Jesus. We have. So there are a lot of things that are working for us. He says, now you don't have to climb a mountain mm-hmm. to come and partake of anything. To me. Now I put the law in your heart and in your mind. So we are, we are actually habi, habitations of a God who speaks. He reverberates in us, not from a distance. Mm-hmm. The distance has been, has been reduced. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now, the things that are difficult for them to keep in the Ten Words, the Ten Commandments, mm-hmm. you can do it very easily. Mm-hmm. Because now you have the Spirit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then they were trying, they were trying. In fact, they had to go and negotiate with Moses <laughs> so that they can become polygamous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the Bible says in the beginning it was not so, yeah? Mm-hmm. But you guys went and negotiated with Moses behind the tent. <laughs> Why? Because you're going to contain your appetites. But now I have come. You can crucify the flesh. So there are a lot of things about the promises of God in the New Testament that we need to count on. Some of them actually are hidden in the Old, Old Testament that are now made alive in the New Testament. So we're not discarding the Old Testament. But we're saying what was hidden there that was revealed. Testament, yeah? yeah. Like when God says things like this, I send my word and it heals their disease. Mm-hmm. But I want to see God visibly. So yeah, He sends His word. Mm-hmm. Now that, that's why the centurion is actually very interesting. He says, "You don't, you don't need to come. My servant is sick. Mm-hmm. Me, I tell soldiers go. They go, come, they come. That's my authority. Mm-hmm. You have, I have authority over soldiers. You have authority over words. Mm-hmm. So just send your word. Mm-hmm. That's a, a challenge to Jesus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I send my word and it healed their disease. And the Bible says in the self same hour, the servant was what? Healed. healed. Now, we, in the pursuit of healing, we are saying God is not distant from us. His word that is available is actually what? The capsule of healing. <laughs> and I don't have to... Anyway, that's going to be politics. I don't, want to, I don't want to do a lot of religious stuff to, to, to make it here. Yeah. I don't even have to make sense. Yes. That makes sense, yes. Yeah. Good, we shall stop there. Uh, yeah, but go and read Galatians. It's only six chapters. Yeah. Yeah. Before you watch the next series. Mm-hmm.